Hey, this is Chris. Heading back out on the road again. I kind of like this. I really do. I mean, I like being mobile. I like being able to meet people. I like not being tied down to my next shop all day long. So, I got two things to take care of. One was an old, and I mean old, compact desktop. Uh, got it from the customer on Friday. Didn't really look at it over the weekend. I really, you know, try to not work on the weekends too much because I'm so busy during the week. It's good to decompress a little bit. But uh, <clears throat> took it apart this morning. Uh, the complaint was it would turn on for about 10 or 15 seconds and turn itself back off. And sure enough, that's exactly what it was doing. Uh, a little twist to this was I went ahead standard operating procedure, you know, you uh, go into the go into the desktop and you unplug everything, all the all the uh, all the devices like the hard drive and the CD-ROM, anything else that might be drawing power from the motherboard, turned it on and it stayed on. Now that is really weird. And so uh, then I plugged back in the CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, exactly, and it, I turned it on, it stayed on. So I thought, well, then I plugged the hard drive back in and it turned on and turned off again after 15 seconds. So my initial thought was there's something wrong with the hard drive. You know, maybe it's got a short in it. Must <clears throat> not, not something severe, but something just drawing a little bit too much power that uh, that possibly it was um, trigger, triggering, you know, an automatic shut off in the power supply because the power supply would not, after it shut off like that, it would not turn right back on. I had to unplug uh, the uh, desktop for a couple minutes, and then it would turn back on. So I thought it must have been, <clears throat> must be the hard drive, and so I got another hard drive out of my cabinet, and it stayed on for about maybe about 30, 45 seconds, long enough for me to say, okay, I need, let's go ahead and hook up, you know, the, uh, a mouse and a keyboard to it, and let's get to work, uh, you know, reloading the operating system, so I thought, well, the hard drive's just bad, but then it cut off again after about 45 seconds, <clears throat> and then displayed the same behavior that it had been displaying before, it cut off for 15 seconds, and turn off, so, uh, that redirected my attention to the power supply. Fortunately, I had an old desktop uh, in my closet and uh, pulled the pulled the power supply out of that, stuck it in the compact, and voila, everything works great. Spent a little while uh, cleaning up the hard drive that was on the machine. Uh, I noticed it booted up fine, but it was really slow. Uh, and But no real no real indicator, you know, nothing was using up a lot of CPU time, you know, the hard drive wasn't running, well, it was running, but it didn't seem to be overly running too much, uh, checked out task manager, CPU usage was not ridiculous, it was, you know, 30, 40%, but you kind of expect that, you know, on, on a boot up, and so it ran CCleaner on it, that cleaned off about a gigabyte of files, and didn't run malware bytes because I didn't I didn't really think it was a uh, virus. Just went ahead and run the defragger on it, my defrag. Uh, the drive was incredibly heavily fragmented. And so, uh, which is what, see, that's one of the things I like about my defrag. It gives you an idea of what's actually going on on the hard drive instead of just giving you this little chart that's so hard to read, you know, the Windows uh, native defragmentation tool. It doesn't tell you a lot. Defrag, my defrag visually will give you a good indication of what's going on. So, uh, let the My Defrag run until it was finished. Took about an hour, and now it's running great. I mean, just uh, boots up in about 30 seconds. Uh, cycling time from shutting down to booting up is about a minute, so that's great. <coughs> so that's ready, and taking that over there right now. Also have an iPad that I fixed about two months ago, and customer complained, I mean not complained, you know, I just use that word complained, um, well, just let me know that the home button wasn't working anymore, I thought man that's really weird, but I got it back and sort of, sure enough the home button was not working, kind of odd for, you know, a new replacement screen that I just put in two months ago, but hey stuff happens, that's why we have a warranty, right, and so I uh, got another screen for it, 
they came with a new home button. Uh, I always get screens that always have all if if I can. Yeah, you know, I want the home button already on there. I don't. That's something I don't want to fool with. Is you're taking the home button off the old screen and putting it on the new screen. It's just you know, and they're. If you get one without the home button, you only save two or three dollars anyway. On the other hand, if you want to buy a home button, it's like ten bucks, so that's not worth it either. So you can get a new screen for just a few dollars more now. So that's what I did. Got another screen. Uh, fortunately, I was able to save the old screen, and so if I get in a situation where I'm in a pinch, you know, I have to change the home button. I've, at least I've got a screen handy. Anyway, uh, got that one apart, put it back together. Fired it up, man. It works great. Home button works perfectly. So that's a warranty repair, though. No, no, uh, no charge for that one. Uh, but you know that's why we have warranties. So customers, customers have confidence buying from us and having their stuff repaired because they, yeah, we stand behind what we do. Uh, that's important to me. So anyway, that is my afternoon so far, and that's really going to be about it. It's three o'clock. And uh, by the time I get home from doing this, it's going to be about 4, and so I'll probably just check my whatever voicemail messages I have and work out a schedule for tomorrow. And uh, so that's it for it. That's it for it. That's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. If you want something fixed, give us a call, 919-693-5580. That's a number local to Oxford. Uh, it rings through to my mobile anyway, which is 919-518-6649. And uh, I'm sure we can help you out with whatever problem you're having. Until the next one, we'll see you.